world as we're going through those teenage years. Um, which takes us out of that realm of fantasy. And because we're in the real world, we're also then associating much more with adults who have also gone through this, and therefore we're mirroring. Do you remember what I said when, when I've got a conversation with somebody and the more I do things, the more they start to do things mm. without realising? So that's what's happening with our young people, is that they are mirroring adults because this is not the way we need to talk. We need to sound quite serious. We now need to do this. And this narrows the pitch band, if you like. So if you had to draw a graph... Yeah that band would be quite thin because we're not using the whole pitch range in our voice. So part of my workshop is that um, I teach people how to do a vocal slide, for example. Um, and this is not anything to do with uh, being pretty sounding voices or anything else like that, but it's exploring the voice and how high you can go. Um, so I talk in terms of um, thinking about as bit like when you go down a slide when you were a child. And so if we start right at the top of our voice and we kind of use a me sound and we do the squeaky end of our voice where we're really literally squeaking and then we start to slowly come down and then go right into the pits of our boots. Now we've got a vocal slide going down. I teach them how to go back up again as well. And then you can go round and round. Uh, and so now because they've explored a little bit with their voice, they can now go up and down in their voice wherever they like. And if you like, that's a bit of vocal acrobatics, mechanics, if you like. So does that, I, did I explain the, the, um, you know, the, the vocal slide very well or do you want me to demonstrate? <laughs> Both is my answer. You, you explained it well, but I would love for you to demonstrate it. <laughs> Okay, right. So what will happen is, is um, if I'm, if I'm uh, working with someone, is I would tell them they'll, they'll need to use a me sound. If you use a me sound, the mutt sound, because it's right at the front of your lips, you can get the sound to be right at the front of your face, um, which helps you when you need to go very squeaky. And as I said, it's not necessarily very pretty, but, but then it's not supposed to be. Yeah. It's about you exploring actually the capabilities of and potential of your voice and so I put my hand right up to the top as if we're at the top of the slide I get them to breathe in and then they go just like that nice nice now no one's ever going to go squeaky on you except for example you might be telling a story um, on stage um, which gets to the point where you're perhaps doing a conversation between two people. You know how you sometimes tell stories to people like yeah. in the pub and things. Uh, and you have that bit of conversation thing that you might do between two people as part of your story. And one of them goes, oh, really? <laughs> now, I'm using that more squeaky end of my voice. Ah, yeah, What's yeah. really interesting is that if you hear a speaker do that, you tend to go, oh, really? Mm. Which is not as expressive or as communicative is oh, really? Because that's what we tune into. That's what our brain wants to hear. Got it. Got yeah. it. Nice. So I that's think. the pitch. That thing. Diction. Well, it, it's like anything else. Um, in English, a lot of our words begin and end in consonants. Not every word. I'm sure you're all sitting there thinking, well, what about this word? Or what about that word? It starts with a vowel and the rest of it. Yes, no, I know. I get it. But quite a lot of them do. As you go around speaking to people, have a listen out and be conscious about how you, what words you're saying. And you'll see that quite a lot of them begin and end with a consonant. And that produces our frame, if you like, like a picture. OK, so we encase our pictures in frames, which then means we can hang them up so we can see them. So if we don't, as a speaker, have very good frame around our word, very good diction, then that doesn't travel project in other words to an audience so they lose some words so they perhaps lose possibly even the sense of the sentence or if they don't lose the sense of the sentence then they have to work really hard to listen out for and work out what the sense of the sentence is uh, and I'm all about we shouldn't make our audiences work that hard because they don't need to not if we're doing our jobs correctly so we need to practice those consonants so I don't know if you can hear, but I've got a clicking sound going. Can you hear it going in the background? Now, yeah. Now, you see, what you can do is you can find a metronome um, app or something like that for your phone. So you don't have to do this clicking business. 
I'm quite used to it as a musician. We end up doing this a lot. Yes. yes. And then basically you need to um, just do some exercise. So, ba 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 da 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 ka 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 fa 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 ga 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 ha 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 and so on all the way through. That will help us really get our consonants going but it also gets us to use our tongue and our mouth more so we learn to put more energy into that when we do that kind of exercise so it means that our our consonants become crisper this means that when we're on stage or doing a workshop then we have crisped up those consonants which means that we're framing our words better which means they're going to land in the right place better um, which is so much better basically for our audiences i said earlier on audience is king and i really mean that it is about making sure that our audiences are really taken care of and having good diction is one of those things now i come across a number of speakers whose english um, is not their native language and perhaps they've got a more vowel soundy language some of the asian languages are like that and they've used their tongue in a different way they're using it to shape sounds in their mouth rather than to use it to hit like just behind our teeth or our hard palate or or any of those things that we do when we do a t sound or a d sound for example we're hitting things in our mouth so they they need to strengthen up their tongue and learn how to do that and an exercise like this is absolutely valuable for them there are also other types of diction as well there's there's not many languages in the world that has a th sound the th sound like the mm -hmm. and through and this and that and quite often for a lot of people it becomes d and dis and dat because they're using a d sound rather than a th sound and it's quite a unique sound because the the tongue actually comes just outside your mouth so if you watch yourself when you speak and you do the the sound and things you should just see the tip of your tongue if you watch in the mirror just pop outside of your mouth most people don't even notice it but there are a lot of people if english is not their native language who can't do this because it's not a part of their own language and so therefore there are certain things if you're speaking english we now need to look at for example um, and those things are, are really good examples of those. Nice, nice. And I, I got to admit, you just just had me here, just just testing the the sound. And you're right, I can just spot my tongue, just 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 peeking out there as, as you do the. And I've never ever never spotted that before. That's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> So these are the kind of things that I call vocal mechanics. Um, we can do things um, like with the tone of our voice as well. Um, I had someone in a workshop, um, I think it was my first workshop, who came as a speaker. And um, she had a very quite what I would call thin tone. Now, the problem with having a thin tone is that it doesn't project very well because the sound is leaving your mouth. And because it's a thin sound, as you can imagine, as it goes away from you, that thinness gets worse and yes. therefore it doesn't perhaps even reach your audience. So you need to be thinking about a fatter tone in your voice. So how do we get a fat tone? Um, well, we can do this in a number of ways. I quite often like to do it in a singing way because it's easier to do singing first and then move it into speaking rather than the other way around. And so what I get usually people to do um, is usually sing a, a really simple exercise like oh, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, five, one, just like that. Nothing else. So they sing it. And we sing it a few times. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, five, one. And then I tell them now I want it in a witch voice. You know that voice. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, five, one. And that's what in singing we call twang. And twang, when used, well, in fact, there are certain American accents which have twang in them. Yes. Um, they sound very nasal. You can probably almost hear them in your head now. Yeah, I can, um, yes. <laughs> that kind of sound so i get them to to sing the ordinary version one two three four five four three two one five one now the witch version one two three four five four three two one five one and then i get them to now what i want you to do is do 50 percent normal and 50 percent witch I, oh so we've got one two three four five four three two one five one one two three four five four three two one five one one two three four five four three two one five one and can you hear on the last one the tone of my voice has got fatter because I'm using half and half. Yes, yes. Now that leaves your mouth 
and now will go a long way as it travels because before it tails into nothing it's got a much bigger bandwidth to travel away from you so it, it can go much much further and incidentally there are some acoustics i don't know if you've ever been in some places where um even though you know you're talking pretty well you sound muffly yes yes i don't know that yeah if you spin more twang on it it cuts through so it may be you do 70 percent twang 30 percent normal but actually that twang cuts through that type of muffly acoustic right right i get you i get you so vocal mechanics you use all of this and you put it together with what we've already talked about and suddenly you will now have a speaker that it will sound very very different on stage yes yes I get you. That makes that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, we, we could we could continue this for hours and hours. Um, but unfortunately, we've we've kind of <laughs> we've run run out of our allotted time for this. Um, so I think that's a good place for us. Good place for us to stop. I'm going to I'm going to be. Uh, I, I I just know I'm going to be practicing that one two three four five four three two one five one song all afternoon <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been a, an absolute blast, Caroline. If anybody wants to find out more about how they can get in touch with you, maybe work with you, find a bit more about what you, what you do, what's the best way for them to, to, to get in touch? Is there a website or something they can get you at? Okay, well, at the moment, because the website's in construction at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, then I think there are two good ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. One is that you'll find me quite easily on Facebook. Okay. Um, and I do quite a lot of Facebook Lives and things like that. So you should be able to find me quite easily. Um, so you can always message me there. Um, and the other way is my email. And so my email is carolineking0912 at gmail.com. Cool. So that's you find. So if anyone wants to, to find you, get in touch, find out a bit more, figure out how they can work with you, or even just listen to your your wonderful voice more, they can find you as Caroline King on Facebook, or they could also yep. email you Caroline King zero nine one two at gmail dot com. Absolutely. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Thank you. And thank you so much for this time, um, Keith. It's been lovely and I've so enjoyed it. And I've, I've enjoyed having you as a guest and um, I've, I've learned a lot of things here, uh, not least of which that, that song, which I can hear going around in my head, uh, some, some really <laughs> cool tips there for, for improving the voice. And the fact that my tongue sticks out every time I say the, the V sound. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for being with us, Caroline. And to you, my dear listener, thank you so much for joining us once again. You've been listening to the Confidence Alchemist radio show. To find out more, visit theconfidencealchemist.com.